You're listening to Online Pet Health Podcasts with Dr. Megan Kelly, continuing education for veterinarian rehabilitation therapists. Learn more at OnlinePetHealth.com. Hey vet rehabbers, so this is a bonus podcast for you guys this week and it brings the number of podcasts up to 99. I've been podcasting now for about three years and I really cannot believe that we are one episode away from the big 100. In this podcast, I talk to Rachel Spencer, she's a UK journalist and a PR expert, as well as vet rehabber and online pet health member Kirsty Skeets, who has some been using some of Rachel's techniques really successfully and she sees amazing results in her practice. So this podcast is especially for our vet rehabbers that own their own practices. And I just want to let you know, we also have a really special Facebook group called the Business Vet Rehabbers. So if you haven't joined us online, please hop over and come and join us where we talk all things about the business of vet rehab practice. We also have three other Facebook groups called the Hydro Vet Rehabbers, Small Animal Vet Rehabbers and Equine Vet Rehabbers. There are three amazing communities where we share advice, we share cases, but most of all, we support one another. And these online communities are always there to offer support and advice and tips. So please come and join us there. But first, a word from our sponsors. PulseVet are the global leaders in veterinary shockwave technology. They manufacture the ProPulse and the Versatron family of products. Now, for those of you that don't know what shockwave therapy is, it's a non-invasive, high-energy sound wave therapy that can be used on large and small animals to treat multiple soft tissue as well as musculoskeletal conditions. With over 20 years of clinical research, PulseVet is used by top veterinarians and veterinary rehab therapists to improve the quality and speed of healing, to relieve pain, pain, stimulate bone and tissue growth and improve mobility for their patients. For more information you can go to pulsevet.com and you could also meet the Pulsevet team at their virtual exhibit stand at the Vet Rehab Summit in November. Now over to Rachel and Kirsty. Hey Vet Rehabbers, you're listening to the Veterinary Rehabilitation Podcast and I'm your host Dr. Megan Kelly. Today we're going to be talking about how to get media publicity and I've got Rachel Spencer who is a PR expert and a journalist as well as canine hydrotherapist and online pet health member Kirsty Skeets. Rachel and Kirsty, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, it's really great to be on the podcast and I'm really excited to find out more about you and your community and um, how we can help. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Rachel, why don't you start off with just telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, sure. So I'm Rachel Spencer. I'm a freelance journalist. I'm based in the UK and I write mostly about the pet industry. Um, so I write about inspiring animals, about trends going on in the industry, about charities and that kind of thing. Um, and I also offer coaching services for pet business owners who want to understand how to get publicity. Um, for their pet businesses. Thank you. And Kirsty, um, a lot of the community know who you are. Um, so, but you can just maybe for those of you, those of them that don't, just tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, I'm Kirsty, and I run um, Fit for Dogs Canine Hypertherapy Centre in um, East Yorkshire in England. Um, and we've got a underwater treadmill and a hydrotherapy pool. We also have a physiotherapist that comes in as well. And we this week the groomers have just started here, so they have been super busy. Awesome. And so the reason I've got Kirsty on is because Kirsty is always in the media, guys. So whenever I see anything on Facebook, there's some media publicity about Kirsty and her practice. And so in a recent virtual coffee that we have every Fridays, we'd love you guys to join. And um, it's at three o'clock Cape Town time. Um, Kirsty was mentioning, talking about her media publicity and things that she's been doing. And I said, Kirsty, we have to get you on the podcast. And then she recommended that I get Rachel to come and join us. So that's why we've got both of them. So Rachel, let's start off by chatting about um, how publicity can actually help your practice. Okay, so publicity can help you in lots of different ways. So we all have um, our social media channels, we've got our Facebook pages, our websites, our Instagram accounts, but the difference with having publicity is that we reach a lot of people in one go. Um, so it helps in many, many ways. Um, like with Kirsty, I worked with Kirsty really um, kind of quite close to the beginning of when she first launched Fit for Dogs um, a few years ago now um, and what she wanted to do was to really shout about what she was doing to her community and reach a lot of people in one go. So first of all it raises awareness, secondly it makes you stand out from the competition, thirdly it 
can position you as an expert. Unfortunately, it gets people excited about you and your business. Um, and it gets your current clients excited about you and what you do in your business as well. So, you know, we all like to see the people who are supporting ourselves and our animals as pet owners. Um, and, you know, like, the, you know, what Kirsty gives to her, her clients and her, their animals is massive. So actually her getting her raised on a profile in the community creates a bit of a buzz around Kirsty and, um, you know, with her current clients and, and exist and future clients as well. So it's just win win, really. Um, and it also helps. Kirsty will probably touch on this. I'll leave her to talk about it. But it helps when you're applying for awards and just on so many levels. The main thing is it really helps you stand out from the competition and, and you know, sets you helps you, um, you know, position yourself as an expert in your field. Yeah, because it, I mean, it just gives you some credibility, right? Because yeah. I mean, if I think about people that I see that are in the media, if they're in the newspaper or in magazines, immediately I think that they must be quite important that the media has contacted them or they have been published. Um, so that credibility is really, really important, especially when you start out. Yeah. Um, Kirsty, how did you find, um, you know, when you were in the media and you got this publicity, did you you find that it really really helped you um so to to reach out to maybe to other veterinary practices to get referrals yes yeah, so i sort of definitely by being in the media especially in my local community um i found that very helpful um and, and as you say it sort of lets people know who maybe aren't on social media so it is another way of um, marketing um but yeah, it, it is, it's really important. Um, and building those relationships with journalists as well. And I think also for the pet owners, when they see you in the media, they think, sure, she must be, or he must be really, really good, you know, if they're publishing something ab about him or her. Um, so that, that also gives you that credibility and authority, obviously, in, in your area. So Rachel, let's talk about the different types of media because we obviously have like our traditional media, but there's also other ways which we can get um, some publicity. So what are the different types and how can we get published in all the different types of media? Okay, so absolutely, and with what you were just saying about credibility there, I think it's that, it's that um, I think what makes a difference is it's that third person writing about our business as well, so the third person being the journalist. So we can all kind of shout about how brilliant it is you know what we do and what how great our services are but actually having that third person from outside the business and um, talk about us is really really important but yeah when we're looking at the different types of media um there's so many things to go out nowadays um and i think new media is definitely I, i'm from a print background um, i work for national newspapers here in the uk i'm like you know i'm in my 40s so i'm not a millennial um, so for me uh, when i went into my career it was always print media radio tv magazines now we've got we've got blogs we've got vlogs we've got podcasts like you know this podcast we're on today it's really important for raising the profile of what you do um, so if i use kirsty as an example um, Kirsty might want to have some coverage in a local newspaper. That's brilliant. It's reaching potential clients. She might want to maybe have a column in like a local magazine. Again, raising her profile um, and her visibility. But another thing Kirsty might want to do is reach out to a local um, pet blogger to see if they want to come and try out her facilities because that local pet blogger um, will have a big social media presence. They'll have a big online. They'll have a big following in that particular area. So they can. Kirsty can showcase her facilities on a local pet blog, which is a really niche audience. And then you've got you have your your trade magazines, and then you've got your um, your your you know your niche magazines, which are just about dogs or just about cats. So maybe like your dog or your cat. Um, and then you've got like the publications over here in the UK. We've got like Pet Trade Gazette and that kind of thing. So they might feature Kirsty if she's won an award um, for having you know the best hydrotherapy centre in in Yorkshire or something like that. So it's brilliant because. In the old days, when I first started, like you only had newspapers and magazines, whereas now you've got all these different online publications, blogs, um, social media influencers, um, all kinds of different places to go at. And the more you can hit, the better and the better it is for your profile. So it's a really exciting time, actually. And people really do want to hear uplifting stories about how our lives are being made better with pets and people who are helping improve our pets' lives, which is your community. Yeah, and if I think about all those different ways in which we can get publicity, a lot of people think that publicity just happens, you know, that somebody, uh, somebody maybe uh, there's a journalist, they'll 
you know, find out about a story and, but it's actually not that way. We have to really be intentional about getting ourselves. It's, it's actually part of our marketing, right? And so, I mean, if I think back to the days when I had a listing vet, um, you know, we didn't really have all those online things. So podcasts and Facebook lives, they weren't, and pod, you know, that kind of stuff wasn't really a thing. So it was really more the TV, radio, newspaper, magazines, and it's really difficult to actually get contact with somebody there. So you can try and contact somebody in the TV and you know there's that gatekeeper who just blocks you every single time. Um, and so I think for a lot of vet rehabbers, they think that um, you know it's, it's something that's unattainable for them, but it isn't really. And it's something that you need to be intentional about. And you know, most people, if you think about famous people, they've got like PR managers and that's yeah. what they do. Um, so a lot of the, the vet rehabbers maybe don't have a budget in order to be able to pay somebody to do this. What can they do themselves in order to try and get themselves and their practices out there? Okay, so I'm, I'm just about to start waving my hands around because I'm getting excited now because there is so much good. <laughs> and Kirsty's laughing because she knows know. that Kirsty <laughs> is, she is unstoppable. So first of all, just break it break it down so think about the places that you want to let's think about the publications you want to reach and honestly all you need to do is go and get go and get your hands on a copy if it's a physical publication go and buy it and scour through every single last page of it um, and then if it's an online edition then go and have a look through the different articles that they write and have a think about how you're going to fit in there so just as an example i've just um i've got an online community where um i give support to pet businesses and help them get publicity and one of the ladies in there she wanted to be in a local paper and she had a really good look through it and she found that they do a trader of the week section so she pitched to the trader of the week section and they just went yeah thank you you've helped us fill that um, that column that we need to fill every week so that's what she did so be intentional like you've just said think about where you want to be and then it's really is quite simple steps to follow to get there so the first thing to do will be to buy the publication or get download it what however that publication works and this applies for blogs you know just use whatever examples i'm giving and and just you do the same for a blog then you go and find out who writes there, you go and follow them on social media, you have a look at the different things that they write, you start building a relationship up with them on social media. So here in the UK, Twitter is the main platform for journalists. So I would say to go on Twitter and find, like I'm a, like I say, I'm a journalist over in the UK. If you found me on Twitter, you'll see every day I'm saying, or every few days I'll be saying, can anyone help me with a pet product? Can anyone help me with, or I've just written about street vet, or I've just written about such and such a thing. So you can see what, things people are writing about and you can start to get a picture of the kind of things they're interested in and then you can think okay if it's a little section that I can fit into or what can I give this journalist that's going to help them and that's what we've got to think about we've got to think about helping the journalists giving them stories giving them something interesting for their audience because that's all that they want so it doesn't have to be hard and you don't have to have a PR company because actually journalists would rather hear from you as a vet rehabber with a brilliant story to tell about a really lovely uplifting story about an animal that you've helped than a PR company who's just going to say no uh, you know we, I don't want to talk about this I don't want them to talk about that and actually get in the way actually the PR companies can sometimes be a bit of a gatekeeper because they can stop the journalists getting the information that they want so i hope that makes sense mm. I hope it makes it because i know you've done it as well meg i hope you and so you understand don't you because you've you've, you've yeah it, um, that it but is it was achievable yeah it was so it, it wasn't it was before the days of social media so yeah. i mean I, what i used to do is i used to read the newspapers and then i used to have a look and see any of the journalists that used to write about pets anything yeah. about pets and i would write their names down and then i would um, Google basically and try and get hold of their email address and then if I ever had a story I would send them information so I would basically target specific journalists that I knew that were going to be interested in something pet related because I started to see a pattern every time I read an article where there was pet related it was two or three names and um, then those journalists were writing the same ones and I eventually got through to one of them and her name was Helen Bamford and um, she just carried on writing articles for me. So like, I actually found a whole lot of my um, my old articles. Um, so this was Love one it. that I had. Um, oh, wait, oh, it's upside down. Like that, yeah. 
And um, that was Helen Bamford. And as I'm looking, well, basically all of them are from that one particular journalist. So I made contact with her. And once I got through to her, then she would actually email me and say to me or contact me and say, hey, have you got any stories for me? And when I had anything that was really newsworthy or interesting, I would make contact with her. And generally, she would write about it. So it's really interesting that you say, you know, talking about Twitter. So I'm not somebody who uses Twitter a lot. So how would I find the journalists on Twitter? So how would I go onto Twitter then and say, like, like, would I do the same thing? Have a look and see the journalists that are writing about pets and then follow them and just try and make contact with them there to see whether they were interested in anything that I was doing? Absolutely. So what you've done is exactly what I tell people to do, what you did back, you know, back in the noughties or you know years ago that's exactly what i yeah. tell people to do and it just you know people do think it's really difficult and it, it's out of their reach but it really isn't and i'm so glad that you've you've got that personal experience so you know you, you've walked the walk but yeah exactly the same so pick up the publication or read the publication online get the names of the journalists and then search for them on twitter so go to google first and say if you were looking for like if you were looking for um jane atkinson who works at the sun Jane Atkinson, The Sun, Twitter, and it would take you fairly quickly to where who, you know, to their um, Twitter handle. So I'm just looking at the Telegraph today. Sorry, I'm in the UK. Um, but yeah, there's a stop. So if I just show you, show you my cutting here. So sorry here in the in the Telegraph. Um, and it's about how to deal with your dog's separation anxiety. And there's a lovely um, vet nurse in there, quoted in there, um, in the paper today and it's written by a lady called flick everett so if you flick's actually a freelance but if you read that story and thought this is someone who regularly writes about dogs i want to find them um you yeah. go to twitter and just put in you know journalist flick everett and find them that way and then you can have a look at the stories that they write and they also put requests out on twitter as well for people to interview um, so again, like you had with your contact all those years ago, you can become their go-to person. So whenever they want to write about, um, you know, write about hydrotherapy or whatever your area of expertise is, you're the person that they come to. And that's what we all want. We want to be that go-to person. And obviously you will then have a look at locally. So because obviously there are the the sort of more national newspapers, um, so for, for larger areas. So those ones are a little bit harder to get into, but especially the smaller ones, if you've got a very small local um, paper um, mm -hmm. or magazine, those are usually easier ones to get in because they actually want to know information about the practices and businesses in the area. Um, so you need to be sort of think about bigger as well as the ones that are a little bit closer to you too yeah what i say is always start local particularly when you're starting out as well and if you haven't approached a journalist before and you, you might be feeling a little bit nervous and i hope listening to me waffling on will help you realize that you don't need to be nervous because most journalists you know they're all right and um, so definitely mm -hmm. start local so go um what i always advise people to do is go and have go um you know go into like the local cafes um, and doctors and stuff and see though you know like those magazines that you have that you often have that you pick up in the you know you can pick up in your local community have a look at those go online and, and search for you know newspapers magazines and the area where you live and start with them because like you say they will be looking to hear from businesses in their area and people doing great things for for that community and um, so while we've been on lockdown here in the uk and um, there's been a lot of dog trainers who i've worked with who've set up like support groups for people um you know for pet owners in their local town or village online and they've had some great coverage because that newspaper or magazine has wanted to know what's happening in their community and how they can help people in their community in lockdown these dog trainers have been having these support groups to to give people the help and support that they need virtually so that's turned into a, a story it's a lovely community story and it's great publicity for them so so yeah so start local but then if you go and have a look at the journal request hashtag on twitter that that's where you'll pick up some national stuff as well um so hashtag j o j o r n o request yeah hashtag j o u r n o request so that's in the yeah. uk if you're in america and okay. um, there's haro which is hashtag help a reporter out um okay and i'm sorry i don't know i don't know what all the hashtags are in other countries but if you have a if you um if you have a look at have a, have a good look around on twitter um and maybe if you maybe if you actually go and look for the journalists who you've who you've worked with before, wherever wherever you are in the world, so you've got listeners worldwide, haven't you? Um, maybe go and find them on Twitter and see how active they are. 
mostly um certainly in america and the uk in america and in the uk twitter is the, the kind of go-to network for journalists to find people um i can't i can't speak for worldwide because i only um, really deal with the uk but certainly go and have a look um, or find the journalist and go and try and find out where they hang out most on social media and take it from there yeah, so we'll put all these um, hashtags and descriptions um, in the, the show notes. Yeah. Um, but I did a bit of research and I, I found um, they're actually are websites. So yeah. it's www.helpareporterout.com help, help yeah. and then pitchrack.com and then in Australia New Zealand apparently um, sourcebottle.com is okay. one. And then I found Europe and UK journal requests .com. Mm -hmm. um, So I'll put all of these guys in the description for you guys um, to find. So yeah, Rachel, let, yeah, let's chat about like trying to get um, on other media, like maybe the radio and TV. So, mm -hmm. and you know, when, when I also, I did exactly the same thing. I listened to radio and when I heard somebody talking about pets, I wrote down their name and then I tried to contact the radio station. Yeah. And it was, with all of these things, I just want to say is that it took a lot of perseverance. And mm -hmm. um, so like I tried and tried and tried and tried and it took a long time for somebody to to actually say, OK. And my first one was the newspaper article. And then what I used to do then is I used to say, here's a link to the newspaper article that I was in when I then emailed the radio people, because if you as soon as you've been in once in, in yeah. some type of media, it seems to then just snowball. And yeah. once they see, oh, you've been in a, in, an, um, in a newspaper article, you know, this must have been interesting, then they actually take notes. Mm -hmm. um, so you just got to get that first one, guys, and then you can and so do it. So do you have any other tips about, you know, how to contact people to try and maybe get on radio and TV? Okay, so if you've been, so you've done a brilliant job, by the way, Meg, like really, really good. If you were one of my case studies, I'd be like, you've got to listen to what Meg did because you've done everything mm -hmm. right. Um, so, so yeah, so what the other thing that happens with radio and TV is quite often if you're in a newspaper, then the radio and TV station may follow up. So it's really important. I know where it is, people are really visible these days, aren't they? It's really easy to find people. So if I, if I read a story about you in the paper, I could quickly find you online couldn't I so first of all always make sure that you're really easy to find online so if you go in the newspaper and the, your local radio station thinks oh that's a good story how can I get hold of Meg that it's easy to find you so that's my first my first tip the second tip would be really just to be persistent and do what you've done um, so you know get the details of your local radio station ring them up um, or in fact first of all do your research so have a listen to all the have a have a look around the website have a listen to the different shows maybe have a look maybe if you want to search for your particular keywords um, on their website and see what see who's covered this is the same for, for radio and tv because they have you know they've got quite detailed websites nowadays see who's covered um the subjects that you know the subjects that concern your business and then try to find that journalist, try to get their email address, try to, again, just go into Google like you did the first time um, and try to follow them. If you can follow them on social media and just get a flavor of what it is that they, they're they interested in. And then think about what you can give them. What stories can you give them? Um, so again, if we've got this scenario where you've been in the paper and the radio or the TV follow up, brilliant. But look at what's going on in your community. Look at what's going on in the, look, look at what's going on just in life. So let's say, for example, we're coming up to Christmas and you're a vet. You might want to give you might uh, they might want to come out and do a section with you whether it's tv or radio talking about the risks that pets face at christmas and how to make sure your pet has a stress-free and healthy christmas so you can maybe go to them in november maybe a little bit earlier even and say are you um just wanted to get in touch because um, i'm a vet living in wherever it is that you live and um, i wondered if you were considering um christmas cover if you're planning christmas coverage because i um wanted to pitch a piece to you about how to keep pets safe at christmas so go to them with an idea where you're giving value but you're also obviously saying who you are and what you do giving them something entertaining so we've got the, the animals and we all love our animals where you know our lives are so um, you know they bring so much to our lives don't they and um, so go to them with something go to them with something that, that they're going to say you know you think they're going to say yes to that they're going to want to cover yeah because i think i mean the, the the things that we do are so newsworthy right yeah. i mean if i think about the coverage that i got it was about prosthetics you know when i did a prosthetic for a dog and um, wheelchairs getting yeah. a paralyzed dog 
to walk again. Um, you know, I treated some, a lot of blind dogs, so it's not, not the dogs being blind, so the people blind and they yeah. were guide dogs, you know, and um, they love those kind of stories, you mm. know, a blind, yeah. a, a guy whose who's, um, guide dog got a cruciate rupture and couldn't then do his job, you know, and um, so those kind of things, um, that actually just happened by chance, that one, um, but you know, we got to think about all the things that are news and people want to know about. Yeah. Um, and I also think, you know, I got a lot of coverage on doing therapeutic exercises. Um, so that one particular article that I got was Mutt's Kick Butt at New Doggy Boot Camp. Mm -hmm. um, and that one in particular, that the newspaper, obviously, they wrote the article. And then the ETV news, um, that week, we ended up in the 8 o'clock news um, oh, because yeah. they, the, the TV actually approached us because they would seen that article. So you're right. Once you get into newspaper, one of those, then the, the other media follow. But we really got to just think about all the awesome cases that we've got and how we can share that. Because, you know, in the end, it helps um, your practice, but it also helps the profession because it's it's this is a very new profession and people really need to know about what we can do and how we can help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you've given some great examples uh, there, Meg, and it's brilliant. I'm so pleased that you you've had such great coverage. I think what we've always got to think back to we yes we want to raise awareness of what we do, but we have to think about the man on the street or the woman on the street and what are they going to find interesting. So it has to be a heartwarming story, like you're talking about the, the guy with the blind dog who had the cruciate ligament problem, the prosthetics. What What is the average person going to find interesting? So whenever you're pitching, you're not pitching for fellow professionals. You're not pitching yeah. to show off your knowledge. Um, you're pitching for the man on the street. What is the average? Like over here in the UK, you know, half the population has a pet. Um, you know dogs and cats we love hearing about our dogs and cats so think about you know what is the average person going to find interesting and that example of the dog and um, you know the prosthetics the wheelchair the the guy with you know the guy with the blinds off that's what everyone would find interesting so you might you might have some, you might be doing some really pioneering new treatment but it might be kind of a little bit clinical that wouldn't be interesting if you were doing uh, again please excuse my ignorance um, guys, yeah, no. I, I'm a journalist. I'm not a pet professional, so sometimes I might sound a little bit, a, a little bit silly. But anyway, let's say if Meg was doing, an, she had some fantastic pioneering treatment. If she was just saying, you know, a, a, a vet has got this treatment, the journalist would go, no one cares. You know, that's that's either trade press or it's just not of interest to our audience. But if you were saying, you know, I've got this pioneering new treatment and it's helped this dog who had arthritis for all of her life to, you know, enjoy, however, you know enjoy life in a different way or if you know if you've had if you've got a treatment and it's helped the guy who who had the the guide dog if it's helped that dog to walk again that's different because it's about the human as well it's about that human interest um so always think about always think about your reader and always think about your reader being the man on the street um and going there with a with the kind of story that you can see on the news like you just described like the doggy boot camps um you know those kind of things yeah, those it's those stories that tap into the emotions, mm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Either those feel good ones or those ones where you oh no, that's dreadful. Like you just really want mm. that um pet or dog to get better. So um once you get the interview, let's say you you a journalist is now interested in your story. How can we make sure that we're adequately prepared? Because you know, I think once or twice I had some articles that were written and you know what I said wasn't exactly what was written so it, it was fine it wasn't bad but i thought to myself oh if if the journalist had got that completely wrong it wouldn't have sounded right mm -hmm. and and so like one of the things is you really want to make sure that, that your message is coming across correctly um, and you want to be prepared to say the right things so what advice could you give us okay so i've got a podcast episode on this very thing because i thought this is something that comes up over and over again so i'll give you the link and you can link to it in the show notes and then if people want to go and have a read through i've got a blog and a podcast on this where i break it all down but the key thing i would say to you is as follows if whatever story that you have think about what are the key messages that you want to get across so if you've got like three key points two or no more than three because you don't want to be you don't want to feel like you're just banging on about the same thing all the time if you've got a really important point that you want to get across then have that prepare for the interview have it you know i always have a pen and paper at the ready like i'm 
I'm such an old fuddy duddy. But anyway, or have your have your key points written down in front of you. So if you do feel a little bit nervous or or however you're feeling, or if you're distracted, or if it goes off on a tangent, you're gonna come back to those points. So just to give you an example, I've done a lot. I've done quite a lot of work with um, a charity over here in the UK called Street Vet, and a very similar charity called Street Plus. They help people who've got who live on the streets and who have pets. So one of the key points, whenever um, we were talking about them, was that people who people who are homeless and who have pets on the, and who are on the streets with their pets, they're on the streets for a reason, and the reason is because most hostels don't accept pets. So we wanted to change the perception that people have pets. So they're given, you know, so people give them money. We wanted the public to understand that the reason they're on the streets is because they choose um, their pet over, you know, having a hostel or having a home. So that's a key. That's a key point that we always want to get across. So we'd always have that written down. I'd prepare them to have that written down before any interview. So think about that, and then just think if you know. So let's whatever the topic is maybe go and ask if you really want to prepare go and ask a friend who's outside of the profession say i'm doing an interview about this what would you like to know as you know as a as someone outside of the profession a regular pet owner or just a regular person what would they want to know and um, always have things like you know your website ready just you know so, you know the obvious things like that you know some things about your background maybe just some maybe some nice sound bites that are going to you know that are going to that could potentially be a headline for you and um, so again with you know what i've just talked about with the street vet people it, the headline could be you know these homeless people choose to stay on the street because they can't bear to be parted with their pets so that could be that could be the key quote that the journalist might take away so just be thinking about what exactly it is that you want to get out of this interview and what the key points are that you want to get across and other than that as far as preparing goes i would just say be really friendly um, try to relax try and make it more like a conversation um, that you'd have with a friend, you know, journalists are are are, are real people too. Um, you know, they they're often quite time. They're often quite time poor, so you might need to be. They might you might feel like they're being quite abrupt or they're rushing you. If you feel like that, please don't take it personally. It's not because they think you're you know they're not interested or whatever you might think. Just make sure you've got your key points ready so you can say, you know, bang bang bang. This is what I need. To, this is this is what people know need to know about this story. And again, if, if you know if you've got a case study, let's say if you're talking about an animal that you've rehabilitated, um, you might you know you might you're going to need the breed, um, you know how long the owner had them, how old they are, what the background are, what the injury was that you you helped them with, and so on. So just those key facts, and then just a little bit about you, you know how you got into the profession, how long you've run your practice, and so on. Um, so just all the key information that they need really. But the key thing is just to try and relax and enjoy it. And then the final thing that I would say. Um, and it's more of a follow-up rather than a prepare, but it's, it will really help you stay in their mind, is just say thank you afterwards, send them a note, say thank you, send them your website link, um, send them your photos, always have good photos, high-res photos, um, and if there are, and if there is a really important point that you wanted to get across, then just say, um, you know, you might want to include that in the email, so, or if you've got a campaign or something like that, you might want to link to that. If you can get a link in an article, that's really great for your SEO as well, so follow up, follow up the call with an email, covering the key points, any questions this is what this is where you can reach me and um, you know thank you for thanks for your time yeah that's great advice and then obviously also you want to just continue that relationship so keep in contact with them yeah. um, and if you see any things that they've published you know especially if you're following them on social media that are interesting to you comment on them you yeah. know so a lot of the time when we're on social media i'm a very big one on like trying to now promote people to be social on social media yeah um, so like if you're scrolling past and you think something I just say it now. So every time yeah. I, if I scroll, I say, think like, oh, that's such a cute picture or what an amazing story. I, whatever I think in my head now, I actually just write down and comment yeah. and say, because sometimes we just think it and then just keep scrolling past. And especially those um, people that are spending that time, um, journalists, you know, they spend a lot of time um, getting those interviews and trying to share those stories. And a comment means so much to them so um guys follow the, keep following them and commenting and build a relationship with them because they're the ones um who you know next time you have a story as soon as you come to them if you've got a relationship with them you commenting on their posts and they connected with you then they're more likely to 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 do another story on you right mm. and also yeah they're going to remember you and they're going to you know they're going to see you as that nice helpful person at the end of the day like journalists get a bit of a bad rap definitely over here in the UK and um, you know someone's nice to them they're just like oh my gosh this is amazing and you know you do remember them and you know just as like 
using this chat today as an example we've we connected on social media a few months ago you know we've liked and commented on each other's posts we've built that relationship and then when you contacted me and said you'd like to chat i was like that's brilliant you know i know meg i know that she does this i i, I saw a couple of posts about people you've had on your podcast before who i know like hannah from canine arthritis management and there's a few other people and i was like oh my gosh hannah wants me to go on i'm um, sorry Meg wants me to go on a podcast and it's like you know that's awesome I was really pleased so it's about building that relationship and you can do that without you know literally just as you're scrolling and as you're on social media anyway so definitely do that because people do appreciate it so Rachel and I've been speaking about tv newspapers radio and now Kirsty is your turn to tell us about how you get to win all these awards because basically Kirsty is always in the media for all these amazing awards that she wins um, and it's a form of media coverage which i think is absolutely amazing um so Kirsty, tell us about how you enter do you enter these competitions do people approach you how do you get into the competitions and and achieve all these amazing uh, achievements um so the, well there's a few different ways um obviously there are some which are nominated from customers and clients or um from obviously other people in the community um or there are ones that you obviously have to nominate yourself um so there's a few different um ways that you can go for awards um i was doing a course with rachel and um, i said i'm going to be winning this small business sunday twitter award with um theo Pafetis. So um, that was my aim. I was just like, right, I have to do it. And I did it. Um, but well the thing about winning it is I became part of the Therapy Fetus's community. Um, so, yeah, I am a Small Business Sunday winner, but also I'm now with a, another 3,000 people in the community who are also winners. Um, and he put on a day um in birmingham so we all went well it was 900 of us went down and we had breakfast and lunch and he phoned up his friend and said send us some bubbles so we all got some bubbles and that was all just part of being a winner um and we get to do that every year so we also get to network with other um businesses as well i've already been networking with um businesses that sell dog food and other pet businesses there's a few photographers in there so um winning awards also become you become part of that community um so finding out so i suppose my big thing about um which awards do i pick that i want to enter and that goes back to my core values of my business so within my business it's the customer service is super important um family awards because being a family business and also obviously the location that we're in so when i do look at awards that I want to be part of, it always comes back to my core values of my business and does it fit in with what I'm doing um, with my business. So we've got um, family Yorkshire Family Business Awards coming up, which we're a finalist for, and that's on the 25th of June. So we're going to have a virtual party <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for awesome. a virtual award night. Um, so Best be of fun. luck. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but that fits in with our business and we're a family business and that's what we do. And um, it also, um, obviously with our clients, they're not just clients, they're now part of our family. So it, it's really important for them to be part of it as well, which they're always so excited about, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. So good luck with that. Um, I will be watching to see. And no doubt you will be winning something. I know because I'm. I, I mean, I, I can't even. How many awards have you actually won? I, I can't even count now. I know. I'm going to have to go through and count them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's obviously that was 2019. But <laughs> I now need to win 2021. <laughs> so Rachel, how, how does one? Um, how does one find awards that we can look to enter because obviously every time you win an award it's amazing publicity um for your practice um and it's i think it's also good just for networking as kirstie's mentioned you know she's able to network with people and often they're local awards 
So, I mean, how does one, I mean, because you can basically Google an award, but maybe something might not come up then. Um, how does one actually find them and on a regular basis keep just being looking out um, for awards that potentially one could enter for? Well, I actually think Kirsty is probably your woman to ask this question. But what I would say from, from my point of view as a journalist is, um, you know, have a look for the have a look for awards that are tied to publications as well. So, um, you know, if your local if your local newspaper has an annual awards or small business awards, fantastic. Federation of Small Business, I know Kirsty's um Kirsty's um, applied for or Kirsty's been nominated for awards there. Think about industry awards um and and yeah, and then sometimes like the large pet food companies, they have awards as well. They have some amazing projects over here, um, like Purina over here have just done their Better With Pets prize, where they've awarded, not only do you get the publicity, but you also get a, a, a significant amount of money. Um, so so yeah, I mean, I would say Kirsty will be able to give you some more advice, but the, the places to look at will be, you know, industry websites, newspaper websites, um, and yeah you're going to see a lot on social media as well but also make sure that the credible awards as well i think um because there's you know there's so many awards out there isn't there and kirsty will know because she's you know she has will have looked at so many over the years um but yeah make sure that they're credible and they they do mean something as well because i know it can take a lot of time and energy to apply for awards so make sure that they're going to be and also also maybe look at your look at your peers as well and see what kind of things they've won and um, think about things like that there's also like the large pet insurance companies they have awards as well so have a look at have a good look around google i would say but i'm going to hand that over to kirsty because she's a, the awards queen because she will know much more than me um yes yeah, so it is it's just looking um at other people in the industry and what um, awards they have won um and what sort of fits in with you as well but yeah i mean i do get an email every week to say these awards are going to be coming so there are a few websites that you can also go and check which have you know like all the de deadline dates um so i do have like a little plan that i have put in place um mm. of all the deadlines that are coming up of awards that do fit in with my business um and that's why i call on rachel to help me <laughs> <laughs> It works. And if it? I've, <laughs> I've got a little tip, and that is um, to use Google Alerts. So if you find an award that you want, then set a Google Alert for it. Um, so if there's any mention of it, so if the awards may be read, um, a registration for them or if it's they're suddenly open now they're taking um, entries for a specific award you should get an email um, so I don't know if you guys do that but I do that for lots of things so I've got Google alerts um, on things that are in um, vet rehabbers kind of community things that we're doing um, so yeah there's a little tip for me yeah definitely to use Google alerts that's another that I would absolutely say that um, you know, I was actually talking about Kirsty on a call the other day and saying about, you know, how you'd have a Google alert for hydrotherapy um, and, you know, she'd have all of the Google alerts locally as well. Um, and then if there's any if there's any studies that have gone on into canine hydrotherapy or, you know, canine arthritis or whatever your niche is, they're going to come up, come, come up in your Google alerts and they're going to give you story ideas. Even if you don't use them as story ideas, you can use them for social media posts, for blogs, podcasts, whatever content that you're creating. But definitely um, whatever your niche is, then go and set up Google Alerts for them. Awesome. Rachel and Kirsty, thank you so much. That's been absolutely amazing and so interesting. And I think the vet rehabbers have learned lots. And I am expecting to see you guys everywhere. <laughs> Newspapers, magazines, blogs. And you better tag me. If you put a social media post and you've got yourself into the media, I want you to tag um, at Online Pet Health so that okay. I know exactly and I can share it. And Rachel Spencer and Kirsty. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, please hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time I load a new podcast. I'm here every week talking to vet rehab therapists from all over the world about veterinary rehabilitation. For more information about continuing education for vet rehab therapists that you can do online, you can go to onlinepetal.com. I'd like to thank you for listening to this podcast and of course thank our sponsors PulseVet. We thank them for their commitment to their mission to improve the quality of life of the animals that we all love by developing, validating and providing advanced shockwave therapy at the highest level of support and service. Remember you can reach them at pulsevet.com or info at pulsevet.com. See you all next week.